what's going on you guys i'm outside working on the e420 right now see my new pretty expansion tank i just did this yesterday i didn't record it it was raining and it was just kind of a spontaneous move i had the new tank for a while and just felt like replacing it um, i was going to do a video with like that and doing all new lines and everything but all of the hoses are still in pretty good shape so i just swapped this out it's fairly straightforward um now i am moving on to <laughs> this rat's nest of somebody's hackery in this car's previous ownership somebody tried to put an hid kit um and as you can tell they didn't make it the cleanest setup i mean they tried but uh not good enough for my liking and it seems that this hid has actually failed or something because this headlight stopped working um so i am going to try to just undo this all together since it's not working anyways and see if there is enough of the factory components here still left to be able to uh basically revert it back to halogen lamps because i would prefer those anyways that's what came in the car and these headlight housings are not even designed to be able to work with an hid bulb anyways so the halogens will provide better coverage um maybe like some leds i've seen that those work pretty well in these housings but definitely not this hid garbage so i'm gonna try to get this figured out and i'll update you guys along the way all right so it looks like the bulb is just burnt out so theoretically i could reuse this um i don't know exactly what i guess this is just a regular h4 hid bulb but uh i don't even know if this plug comes off of this or if it's like a sealed plug we'll try to get that try to get this off and then we'll see all right guys so yeah there's no coming back from this and this is just hideous um there's no way in the world i'm keeping this so luckily it looks like um what they did is easily reversible um they didn't hack up any of the wiring so that's a nice thing so i can't call them a complete hack um so yeah i'm just going to snip this off bye bye take this out of here you can join the other junk and we'll get this cover out of the way now. And grab that connector I dropped. These are also going to the um, fog lights. And we know these fog lights are not factory. Uh, they're, they're pretty nice. They kind of match the era, but those will likely go as well well they are going to go i already planned that especially once i throw the new bumper on so i am going to see i don't have a bulb right now maybe i can run in the store real quick and see if i can snag a bulb that will work for these um and yeah double check what i have here and see if we can make something work all right guys partial success I don't know if these are technically fog lights, running lights, I don't know. But uh, right now those are working. The fog lamp on that side, because it's still connected to the HID balance is working. But this is a good sign. Um, I'll need to get the rest of this out of here and go find what bulb I need to snag. And yeah, we should be good. All right, guys, it's a day later. I decided to be patient order these online because they're literally like a third of the price you can find them online or in person and nobody stocks hella lights and i prefer them to be honest so got these these are uh, like a 500 hour service light 3200k um or calvin or whatever you call it so i'm gonna go ahead and throw these in and hopefully we got headlights all right those are all buttoned up now man i just love the simplicity of 
this era of cars in general and this era of Mercedes Benz. Just so simple, man. So anyways, let's go test these out. Let there be light, yes. Finally, normal headlights. So pumped. Let's put the fogs on too, see what that looks like. Awesome. And then let's test the high beams. There we go. Sweet. We are golden. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start bunning stuff back up. Shout out to uh, Dave as well, uh, Jixer off of 500 E board for letting me know where this temp sensor is supposed to go. Um, it actually plugs into the air duct on this side. I think that mine is just missing the metal retaining clip. So it's not the biggest deal for it to just be left out, but I'll try to figure out something that I can keep it locked in on this side. All right guys, last steps. Had to come up with some type of temporary solution for those holes that got cut out so I just use this or I just use this uh sound ending um adhesive with the thermal backing so should uh do fine in here and it's not a permanent solution obviously I'll try to keep an eye out the pick and pull for these covers I don't know if they're a produced part anymore or not but they're still function fine so I'll run them as is until I find a spare pair all right, she's all fitted back up. Finally, these things actually fit now that all that junk is out of the way. And uh, <clears throat> we can go ahead and see what they look like once uh, nightfall hits. All right, guys, we're back up to E420. It is now nighttime and, oops, wrong key, I think. We are gonna go for a little test drive. God, the other headlights sucked. <laughs> These look great. That's awesome. Let's see, high beams, low beams. Let's put the fog lights. Nice. All right, here's what they look like outside. It's a nice color. Nice, nice white light. <clears throat> Chilling out with the MO63. All right, guys, fog lights are out. Um, I don't know what these are, to be honest. I mean, they've definitely been hacked up to make the HID bulbs work in them. But let me know, are these a uh, factory Mercedes fog lamp? Looks like they do have a part number on them right there. So very well could be. Don't know if they were designated for this car or not, but um, yeah, they could be factory. Don't see any Mercedes stamp on them anywhere, but yeah, I don't know. You guys let me know. Uh, it'd be cool to try to retrofit them, but I don't know if they will fit on the Duraflex uh, AMG front bumper that I have anyways, so oh well if they don't. Uh, here's the old expansion tank by the way and here is the spare one that i had picked up from the junkyard a while ago but i was not too happy about throwing that in if i was gonna replace it so i wanted something fresh so we threw in that fresh one but i am going to go grab my aux cable real quick so i can have some tunes and then let's go for a little cruise
guys just filled up gas a little bit ago put 20 bucks in got close to a half a tank not bad with everything going on i found one spot near me that uh is like a dollar cheaper than everywhere else and i've been sticking to it it's a 76 and for cash it's only 460 i'm saying only it's 465 for premium which is like i said about a dollar cheaper than anywhere else so i'll take what i can get um i'm over in downtown kirkland right now i need a little bit of meditation time so i'm gonna go over by the water and just vibe out for a little bit got some some snacks with me you guys can't see but anyways i'm gonna walk over here and uh maybe we'll head over to the parking garage in a little bit and uh do some b-roll shots with this thing even though it's absolutely filthy but you know all right guys doc vibes i'm the only one out here which is cool car's back up there got my snacks <laughs> yeah man i just needed this right now i just want to come sit out here extremely peaceful this is lake washington all calm right now clear sky at night you guys aren't gonna be able to see any of that but wish you guys could see the sky water is like you guys chilling out here now don't know what exactly you guys will be able to see but over here is the skyline of seattle now back this way is where we came from the garage got the car torn apart in a few different areas right now well not really torn apart but took the engine cover off letting that cool down i might go for a different job in a little bit but right now i'm actually working on looking at some of the wiring um underneath the driver's side i noticed this in summer that there had been this wiring loom under here um and i wasn't originally going to attack this right now but um figure I might as well see what is actually still in use and what is not. Um, what I actually came here to do tonight was bypass the neutral safety switch, um, at least the lockout feature, uh, kind of in preparation for the manual swap um, and just testing things out, how the car will react. Um, I've seen online that if you jump, I believe it's a purple and white wire and a white and violet wire or something like that. Um, that it will um, disable that uh, being able to only start the car in park or neutral. So hopefully that can help us um, with the actual manual swap. But since I'm in here and I can't really stand to see this random mess, I don't know what is still in use and what's not. I figured I might as well take a look at it and see what's going on here. Um, it's a ton of things on this side, but there's actually only one, two, three, four, maybe five, six. So I don't know, maybe there's as many lines that are coming out here, but I don't think so. It's like looped around weird. So I'm gonna see what actually stakes through to the engine side and see what's maybe plugged in in some places. There's definitely but I feel like some wires that um, don't need to be here are here in the engine bay, but I'm not sure to be honest. Um, oh, you can see that one right there is literally connected to nothing. So watch this. Pull, I believe it's this one. Yep. Well, there's one wire that was doing absolutely nothing and having an open 
wire like that is not the smartest idea. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna try to go through this. I don't know what is still plugged in and what is not. So, oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> How about this one? What's this plugged into? Uh, uh, that one's not, no, it seems like it's connected to something. So I'm gonna have to play around with that. And then there's like this giant, it looks like a phone cable um, tucked in behind this little plastic. So there's only a little screw holding this one on, I believe. Looks like these clips are pretty much broken. So um, should be able to get this one out pretty easy. So let's see what's behind that cover. All right, guys. Well, we got one chunk out right there. All of that was literally plugged to nothing as well. And the only thing out of all of this that's still attached is uh, these wires right here. I don't know what they're plugged into exactly, but um, I, I don't know. Maybe I should take this harness out and make sure that Oh, these have relays on it i'm pretty sure this is for like some type of sound system but this does kind of look like a oem uh, style fuse so I'm a bit confused on that i'm gonna take this apart real quick and just see what these two connections are going to all right, guys, any guesses? <laughs> I don't know what the heck is going on here. Um, one of the, the red wire actually does go to the fuse right here to these little spade connectors that is being jumped between two prongs of this fuse. Very odd, but I'm gonna go ahead and say that Probably is going to have no effect on the car if this is no longer in here. So I guess I'll just chop it off. All right, car still started. <laughs> We're good. I got a little worried for a second when I snipped that red line. Um, the little key buzzer went off. So I'm, I'm wondering if at one point maybe that was for an alarm system or something. But I definitely need to cap that off because um, it's probably got some kind of power going through it possibly so uh yeah bye bye more wiring you guys know i love getting rid of <laughs> unnecessary stuff and this was absolutely unnecessary and honestly kind of a hazard um not kind of a hazard having an open wire i never even noticed that that open wire was sitting in the engine bay like that um of course i mean it's not touching anything but it's just adding a risk where you don't need one at all. So I don't know what, you guys let me know if you know what these fuses are, or uh, relays, sorry. Um, there's that one. And here's the other one, it's a Bosch one. I'm saying you look up the part number for this. Why it's not focusing on that? Weird. Um, but yeah, don't need all this stuff. Got some some free fuses. I'm not going to keep those. But yeah, um, that'll go ahead and do it for that mess. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get in here. And I think, oh, well, I know for sure the loom is right here that I want to get to. Um, so I'll probably pull this vent out of the way just so I can get to. Um, their upper portion of it right here and uh, I need to unplug the battery um, if I'm gonna mess with that I have a little mini uh, jump wire with a fuse I think it's a 30 amp fuse uh, mini fuse I for testing I'm going to just basically trim off the sheathing of the two wires that I need in a small area and at first I will just basically wrap this uh, wire around 
uh, just to make a decent connection maybe tape it up real quick and test fire the car if i can start it in park i know it bypassed it because right now i can't start the car in park um, because either the neutral safety switch is on its way out or i mean i guess it's a possibility it could be out of position but i i did a fairly good job last time when i replaced the bushings i don't think that's it um so yeah um see if we can do this i gotta cap off that wire before i forget and unplug the battery right now all right battery is unplugged so shut this up for now and before i forget cap off that wire and then we will begin our little quest to bypass neutral safety switch i guess i will just tape up the end pretty good all right guys we have everything out that we needed um i tucked up that wire by the way taped it up nice and good it's tucked back there right above the vent um yeah this is the harness right here that connects into the neutral safety switch so if i uh, unpeel some of this tape right here all right guys got our wiring out and my memory was somewhat close but it's uh, the purple wire and the purple and white wire or violet and white wire um so uh number one don't do this um unless you are cautious and will remember to never leave your shifter in drive or reverse when you start the car because it's basically gonna allow you to start in any gear and you don't want that. So I just have to be mindful that it needs to be in park or neutral and I don't know exactly, I'm researching on this chassis and the ECU and what's what's kind of required with the automatic to the ECU or I think it's mostly just through the shifter because that's the only thing that's electronically connected, kind of. I mean, all of these wires go to the neutral safety switch, so it's more than just that, but I'm trying to figure out what I need to do basically to make this car work as a manual error codes are fine but like it needs to run properly uh so i'm, I'm trying to figure it out it's, it's a little bit tricky though so yeah um we'll see what uh goes on here this branches off into three splits it looks like so i'm curious if uh i don't know those feel too thin to be one of the purple but the, one of these goes back up to the key i'm guessing so anyways um time to see if i can shave a little bit off of there and wrap up my fuse to jump these wires both of those are notched basically i'm gonna go ahead and plug this in on both sides i'm gonna cut a little more off on both of these so i can wrap it around basically um and then we will do a test start on the car and fingers crossed. That is temporarily fixed, not permanent, but it's tight enough for now. Um, moment of truth. Let's get this battery back on. Leave it like that for now. All right, keys. All right, let's see what happens. Oh yeah. Okay, in theory, I should be able to start the car in park. Fingers crossed, big fingers crossed. <laughs> Ha ha! Goes in all gears. All right. We're good. All right, so now I will go ahead and make this 
a more permanent connection. I would like to solder this, to be honest. Um, see if I can get the soldering gun. I probably shouldn't be touching it right now. But anyways, um, yeah, let's make this a more permanent connection. All right, she's all cleaned up. Got that connection nice and solid. I just wrapped it super, super tight and then wrapped it super tight with tape. So it's somewhat permanent, but I didn't solder it. Just in case you need to undo it later, it'll just make that process easier and it's it's not going anywhere. It's not like it's in a spot that's gonna move. So we are good to go there. Um, I'm a little bit confused as far as like, once the automatic is out, the neutral safety switch is no longer going to be, I don't know, I, I guess it could still be in the car. Everything could still be plugged into it. And we could leave it in a position where the car thinks it's, in, I, I don't know. I don't know how this is all gonna work, to be honest. Um, but that's one of the parts about being the first to document this whole manual swap thing in this car is I'm kind of going to have to figure this out. So yeah, uh, for anyone that knows these cars well, uh, if you have any pointers or what you think is going to be required for me to manual swap it as far as electronics go, let me know. Um, there could be a chance that all I need to do is bypass that like we just did and I don't know, leave the shifter in well, I guess it doesn't matter what position and leave the shifter connected, the automatic shifter like we did in the W203 at first. And it could have possibility of running, but I don't know. I was going to end the video and then I realized there's another job that I came here to do tonight. Finishing up, getting the measurements underneath to compare with the manual setup so I can kind of estimate what the front draft, what the front half of the drive shaft length needs to be and kind of where the shifter position is going to be, how long of a uh, shift rod I'll need. So yeah, let's go ahead and jack up the car. Also unrelated, but look at this sick Schwinn bike that Mike has rebuilt. Super dope. This is like my dream bike when I was a kid. I used to love the plastic five-spoke wheels. Um, the white ones definitely pop. I used to think they were so cool when I was a kid. Yeah, this thing is sick. Did a good job. He's had this frame for quite a while and he's just like, over the last few weeks, pieced all this together. It's a, a Schwinn Scrambler competition. I think he just got all new stickers for it. And uh, yeah, things in really good shape. Got some Sugino pedals, Redline front bar nice anyways unrelated um let's jack this thing up i have the measurements already for the adapter flange the manual and the drive shaft that i do have right now we need to compare it to this all right guys our measurements are complete uh i kind of figured it was going to be the case but it doesn't look like we're going to be able to use any of the drive shafts just as is we're going to have to get a custom length for sure so i'll probably just end up getting a one piece um get rid of that middle carrier bearing well anyways good to have some progress done on the car I feel like I got a good amount of little tedious things done this week so let's just keep it going keep it rolling as we move forward and get closer to the start of the manual swap so anyways I'll see you guys on the next one thank you for watching peace